welcome to Exo News TV. I'm Michael Sala. In this exclusive interview series, we will learn about William Tompkins' remarkable testimony about his work for U.S. Naval Intelligence during the Second World War. He reveals that he was directly involved in debriefings by Navy spies embedded in Nazi Germany's most advanced aerospace projects. Some of these Nazi projects involved anti-gravity flying sources that were capable of spaceflight. Tompkins' job was to design intelligence briefing packets based on the Navy spies' debriefings and to then deliver these packages to leading U.S. aerospace corporations, think tanks and universities for study and evaluation. Tompkins' incredible story begins in 1941 when U.S. naval intelligence learned about his flawlessly designed models of Navy ships he had seen at the Long Beach Naval Dockyards in California. He was 17 at the time. After the Navy learned about Tompkins' model ships, which displayed top-secret details of gun placements and other sensitive information, they interrogated both Tompkins and his father. When the Department of Naval Intelligence realized Tompkins possessed precocious ability to reproduce complex ship designs using his photographic memory, they quickly arranged for him to be recruited in the Navy service. Tompkins revealed that from 1942 to 1945, he participated in over a thousand debriefings of US Navy spies who have been embedded in leading Nazi Germany aerospace corporations involved in building flying sources. Tompkins said that he served under Admiral Ricca Barra, who was in charge of intelligence operations out of the Naval Air Station at San Diego, and three Navy captains who were specialists in different areas of naval aircraft design, engineering, and procurement. The following interview extract features Tompkins answering questions from Dr. Robert Wood and myself on the information he gained from the Navy operatives the different corporations and think tanks he travelled to, and some of the aerospace technologies that were being secretly developed by the Nazis during the war. Tompkins begins the interview by describing the small office where the debriefings of the Navy spies took place at Naval Air Station San Diego. He had this little small office, the Admiral's office, and he was commander of Naval Air Station San Diego. And so, the the admiral would be sitting here, I'm sitting next to him, and we have one of my three captain bosses sitting here. The typist was sitting on the other side of the table, and the Navy operative, command, lieutenant commander or lieutenant, he'd sit over there. And he would lay out the information, some sketches, very few photographs, so it was almost all verbal, almost all. And if it was the system that we had already known about, other operatives have given us information uh, two years before, and it was an update of it, uh, he would then tie together all of the other organizations that were involved with that specific part of, say, the cigar-shaped vehicles, and uh, what the weapons were, what the operations were, uh, the different companies underneath the ground, which were slave labor organizations. Well, I want to go back to this table where you and, and Rick and the captain and the, the spy is sitting at this table. How many times do you, did you get exposed to events like that? I mean, like, was it 10 or was it a like thousand or like a hundred? Uh, it was four years, right? It, uh, Say a thousand, a maybe, maybe twelve hundred. Well, that would be that would be like every night for for four years. Yeah, it it, it, it was. Uh, so, is it a nightly thing? Mm -hmm. It was typically occurred day after day. It, yeah, this was, uh, and now uh, we would they would stay with us for maybe uh, a week. 
where we tried to put together and uh, better define his information. Right. Okay. And then we'd put that together as a package and then we'd fly that out. So it'd be usually one source would give his story. It might take two or three days for him to give his it, story. Right, yeah. Okay. And then it'd be packaged up and then you'd take it away. Yeah. But I'm saying that this continued. I, I mean, it, uh, and uh, but what I'm trying to do is to grasp the the overall scope of those, say, three or four hundred deliveries you made. Yeah. And some of the scope I've, had to do with the Nazi, Nazi history. But did some of the scope have to do with, uh, for example, the age regression? I mean, Nazi age regression as well as. Uh, Nazi UFO, UFOs. Well, most of it was the Nazi UFOs. Okay. Uh, You're talking about what the Nazis were doing in a military mode. Yeah, but, but it, it went to uh, weapon systems. I mean, uh, uh, all types of advanced weapon systems. Right. Uh, all, all, all types of methods of war. Uh, uh, Did you get exposed to the uh, Hanabu craft designs or anything like that at that time? Uh, for, from the I'm exposed to making sketches of some of the stuff that was actually there. But did you ever come across the term Hanabu as a description for various models of German anti-gravity vehicles? No. Okay. What about Vril? Did, did you ever come across Vril as a designation? Vril 1, Vril 2? Uh, yes, but uh, remember the stuff that, that, that we got was the, uh, the wording is uh, in English, okay? Uh, some of the documents that we got, of course, were in German. Uh, but we didn't get so much of the documents. Uh, it was mostly verbal, and it was saying in his his interpretation. That was another thing because we. Uh, I mean, the admiral wanted the, one of the guys to go check so and so. I want you back over there. I want you back here to, uh, next month. Uh, and then there's updates to the information. Uh, and so some of the stuff that was in German, we had another group of people who converted it to English. And uh, so you're, you're working with information that you don't have uh, background on. And so what you're trying to do is uh, put enough of it together that, uh, say, Lockheed could take that information and develop it, uh, interpret it, and come up with something that could possibly be used. Uh, and we, when I said that many, uh, remember I went back to all of these facilities sometimes six or seven times with updated information that uh, we got because uh, three years after they said it before, the whole thing is now, it's been developed and now it's this, this, and that. So do you remember what kind of material you took to the different places? In other words, uh, uh, JPL, or Caltech, it was called then, right? Not yeah. JPL. At JPL, would you take material relevant to the, the UFO craft or the anti-gravity craft or... I mean, propulsion, uh, every, everything about propulsion, all different types of propulsion, and stuff that I didn't, I had no idea what this was. And uh, then controls, uh, different types of controls, uh, 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 support systems. Uh, the, you, you can almost any subject, any question. You want to ask, there was some of that information that we were getting. But some of the groups didn't get everything. No. I mean, no group got everything. No. So if there were six outfits, uh, D Douglas, uh, Caltech, you know, MIT, was that right? Yeah. And, and, and 
and then maybe Lockheed? Or Lockheed, Boeing, North American, North American. Uh, Northrop, Northrop, even Boeing. So, so there's seven or eight different locations you made deliveries to. Um, as I understand. Mm, no, it, it's, it's hundreds of different places we took the data. Because, yeah, we took the data to every Navy research organization. Oh. Uh, we took it to uh, uh, like, uh, uh, Naval Development Center, War Minister, Pennsylvania. Right. Okay, that's a big facility. I, I bet I went 20 times back there with stuff. Oh, I see. Okay. And uh, uh, then the Caltech one. Was, I didn't even go to Pasadena for, the, uh, Pasadena for that. I went to the Navy's uh, weapons s system out at China Lake oh, okay. because Caltech was working on other programs, okay. big programs there. They would pull their scientists off of whatever that was, and they'd throw these guys into that package and run with the ball. It was, uh, now some of them, when I went to the, they wouldn't let me disseminate the information. They were not interested. They didn't want to have a thing to do with it. Uh, and uh, I had that with several universities uh, who were doing military programs. Uh, Purdue one of them? Yeah, Purdue was one. Yes. Yes. And, uh, uh, and uh, but what I'm saying is not everybody was willing to help the Navy. Yeah. Not the Air Force, like uh, Wright Patterson or yeah, uh, Wright Patterson, yeah, for them as well? yeah. But uh, uh, a couple of admirals didn't want that, but but we had our list of who we thought could help. Uh, but uh, the point is. These were not document after document that you gave them. You give them this information that has been verbally almost, very little photograph, very little drawings uh, of a specific part of the propulsion or a method of control. How do they control these things? Uh, uh, what is it? What is technical things? Though. Yeah, all t all technical stuff, Bob. Okay. And uh, and and I don't mind talking about this because, frankly, I lived that thing yeah. for forty years, and uh, uh, it was staggering. Uh, the the German titles for stuff was a problem, so we had interpreters there that would help us put the package together to say to take to Douglas, okay? Uh, and so there's, there's the misinterpretations and the stuff is not done right. All that's part of it. Uh, <laughs> you don't get some nice good package. Uh, and so packages were taken to places that were insufficient information. And they get all outside and upset with me. Uh, I've got to go get this and that. But, but even though you were not trained technically as an engineer or a scientist, you were exposed to a good deal of technical information in this process. Yes. But it was usually put in terms of, of common language and common sense. So you understood it. I understood some of it, yes. Some of it I had no di I had no idea what he's talking about. Yeah. I mean I and I have to tell him that, you know. In the next episode of Exo News TV, we will hear from William Tompkins about the Navy spies revealing the existence of a secret agreement the Nazis had reached in order to develop advanced aerospace technologies. The implications of the agreement are staggering in terms of what was being planned by the Nazis' secret allies, which shocked the Navy spies and their superiors.